Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. A couple of weeks back I demonstrated how you could use the split toning effects in Lightroom in order to create a more dramatic effect on a sunset and the techniques known as colour grading. Today I'm going to demonstrate how you can do this in Photoshop using what we call lookup tables or LUTs. Now to demonstrate I'm going to use one of the three images you see on screen now and I'm actually going to pick this one and we'll switch into the develop module. Now this is in Lightroom at the moment and I just want to make basic corrections to this image. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this horrible sensor spot on the image here. So we'll close that down and now I want to try to balance out some of the aspects of the lighting on this image because although it's a very nice sunset the lighting on it is pretty dire because of the dynamic range on the camera. I always like to change to the Provia colour space uh, or camera profile before I do any editing because it lets me judge the effects better on the image as I make. Now the first thing I want to do is deal with this black area here and the way I'm going to do that is to use the shadow slider to open it up. Next I want to actually reduce the contrast as well because as I do that it will open up the areas still further. Now don't worry we're going to add the contrast back in later. Next I'm going to use the highlight slider and I'm going to use that to reduce the highlights here and that will allow me to see more of the cloud detail in that area because that has the effect of reducing the contrast quite dramatically I'm also going to push up the white slider just to brighten some of these areas here next a little bit of clarity a little bit of dehaze and now I'm going to warm the image because the camera's auto white balance made it quite blue and that definitely wasn't the case at the time now I'm going to add just a little bit of vibrance as well, not too much at this stage. And if I zoom in on this rock I just want to check how sharp it looks. And that's actually quite good, we won't change any of the default sharpening settings. I think I might just add a little bit of a vignette as well using the effects panel. So I use normally a very soft vignette on scenes like this, but it does tend to give a much nicer feel to the image and at the moment that's actually looking quite dark in some of the shadows so I'm just going to lift up the shadows a little bit more and just lift the blacks very slightly and we'll add in just a little bit of exposure as well and maybe reduce the contrast a little bit more okay so I can see detail in the rocks there that's quite good and now I can right click and I can choose to edit in Photoshop what I want to do is add a lookup table. In the adjustments panel we've got the different layers that we can add and one of those is a lookup table also known as colour lookup. If I open that you can see you have three options for different lookup tables that you can load. I'm going to load a device link and I'm not going to use the pop-up that shows, I'm actually going to use one of the previous predefined ones that came with my version of Photoshop and I'm going to go for this teal magenta gold now there's a lot of these that you can actually use and the different types of panel depending on which one you use have different types of effects so let's just show you one of the other, gold and crimson or you can use cobalt um, or we can switch to the 3D tables and pick one of the film effects. But I'm going to go back to this device link and I'm going to use the teal magenta gold. Now the reason it kept popping up with the dialogues to open a profile is because the default is load a profile and for that it displays that uh, dialog box allowing you to pick the profile you want to load but I've already got some as default and I'm going to use this teal magenta gold as you can see it's really really strong the effect now these are normally associated with being able to provide cinematic effects to film but we're going to use them this time for adjusting a landscape image and improving the sunset 
If you look at that, you can see it's way too strong for what we want to use. And you can, of course, reduce the opacity on it to give a different effect. Now, one of the other things you can do is change the blending mode on the layer. And if I change that to soft light, you'll see that I get a more natural effect. The only problem is that the areas here are now very dark again. And it's, it's built up a lot of contrast because soft light is a contrast adjustment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to remove it very easily from the shadow areas. All we need to do is actually double click on the layer over here. Don't double click on the name or it just opens up the name to adjust. But just a little bit to the right of that, if you double click, you get the layer styles dialog up. Now one of those is this blend if slider here. And the sliders you can see here are levels at which the blending starts to apply. So if I take this level and move it over to the right, you can see around areas here that the tones in the image are actually darker than the point I've got here of 112. If I move it further to the right, you can see that we're then restricting the blending to just the very brightest highlights. Now, we can use this to actually prevent the blending from taking place or the adjustment to being applied in these rocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to the point where I've got most of the sky selected, such as that. And now, to make a more natural blend, what I want to do is split this pointer. So if I hold down my Alt key and I now click on it, I can drag the pointer over to the left. Now what that's doing is it's saying that between this point and this point, any of the tones in the image that fall within there get the effect applied to them but gradually. So at this point here, there's no effect being applied to them. By the point I get to this tonal range here, the full effect's being applied to them. So you can adjust these pointers here to make the effect blend more naturally into the scene. So I'm going to leave it at that point and you can see there the effect it's had. Notice that the contrast adjustment on these dark areas now it's still there but not as much as it was previously. And the effect is actually being applied in the main to the highlights and the colours in the scene. So now I'm going to add a second lookup table. And this time I'm going to use one of the film effects here. So let's go for something like the Fuji Relia. And that immediately creates a very, very dramatic effect and far too much contrast again. So again, we could reduce down the effect. We can also set the blending mode to soft light. What I'm going to do this time though is I'm going to actually create a luminosity mask and I'm going to use that to mask off any of the dark areas in the image. So first off I'm just going to delete the layer mask so I'll select it by clicking it just to make sure it is actually selected and now I can delete it like that. Now in the channels area I can hold down my control key and then I can click on the RGB channel to load it. Now that loads the image as a selection. What's loaded in is the tones. So the brightest areas here, you can see there's a selection around them. The darkest areas, there isn't a selection. So now I can add a new layer mask to this layer where we deleted it. And that creates the luminosity mask here. If I hold down my Alt key and click on the luminosity mask, you can actually see it there. And that's created the effect quite strongly now on that layer. Now if I group those two together, so I'll hold down my shift key and just click the other layer as well, and I'll just pop them into a group there. So you can see immediately, if I turn the group off, that was the original image that we started with from Lightroom. And that's the colour grading effect we've added. And if we drop back to Lightroom, you can see here that was the original image and that was the one we adjusted. So with just a couple of lookup tables, we've come a long way from where we started in Lightroom. Let's actually save our lookup table as a new lookup table. 
And to do that, you can use the file export and use this color lookup tables here. Now in terms of quality, I suggest you don't really go much higher than the high. You can go to maximum, but it starts to cause problems in terms of speed and then trying to load the lookup tables again later. It depends how powerful your computer is. So probably high is the best you need to go to. And these are the different formats of lookup table that can be created, including, interestingly, an ICC profile as well. Now, if I click OK, I get a new dialog box here where I can pick where I'm going to actually save this to. And I'm just going to create it in the LUTs demo. And I've already created a demo version of the file before. I'm just going to call this one um, demo2. And I'm just going to save that. And that is actually the lookup table now created in the demo as called demo2. So I'm going to turn off the original table and I'm now going to load a new one. And there's demo2 that I've just created. I can load that and that's now demo2 applied to my image again. Now what it's doing is it's actually mirroring what we created with the two previous ones here. But it's a little stronger and it's still being applied to these dark areas. So I'll just go through creating my luminosity mask again. So select the mask, delete it, switch to channels, hold down control and click on RGB. That loads in the channel as a selection. And now if I add a mask using the icon here, that's added the luminosity mask and you can see the color grading effect. If I want to now, I can adjust that mask using a levels adjustment. And that will allow me to actually reduce or increase the color grading effect in these different areas until I achieve the look I want. So I'm happy with that. That's looking good, and I've not even needed to change the blending mode. Now, let's try and repeat that process, but we'll use a different image this time. So this time I'm going to go back to my library, and I'm going to pick this other image that I've created recently. I've just shown, shut down the comparison. I'll just create my adjustments, so I'm going to just change the colour profile here for the camera to Provia. And I'm going to just reduce down my contrast. I'll pull down my highlights, boost the whites just slightly. I'm going to add, up, so add in some clarity and a little bit of dehaze, small amount of vibrancy. And in this instance, we'll just add in the soft vignette. I'll just use the calibration sliders to add in a little bit more saturation, possibly a little much, but I'm also going to warm up the colour temperature of the image very slightly. So I'm happy with that. I will just pull down the vibrancy just a little bit because it's a little bit too strong. And now I'm just going to go back to editing in Photoshop. So there's my image. I can now apply the lookup table that I created previously. Demo 2. And there's the effect on the image. At the moment again too strong. This time I'm just going to use the blend if sliders again to adjust this. So I move the slider to the point where it's starting to not have an effect on some of the areas. Hold down my Alt key to split the level here and that will then blend it. If it's too strong in the sky again I can move down the sliders until the point that I'm happy and now split the slider. 
and complete the blending and the whole thing's a little bit too strong so I can just change the actual opacity of the layer and there is my blending effect so if you look at the comparison between the two it's quite dramatic and if you go back to Lightroom and look at a side-by-side -side comparison we've gone from this which is the standard raw file no adjustments we've applied some adjustments and then we've come over into Photoshop to create that which is a far more colorful and dramatic scene so that's just one of the ways that you can use these lookup tables in Photoshop I hope you found that useful I'm Robin Wally you've been watching Lenscraft if you found this useful, please share it and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.